when cocky fighters get destroyed. Showboating has almost become an accepted part of all combat sports. Some can do it well and still win, while others fall flat on their faces, embarrassed and bruised. There's an old adage that says those who are willing to run are the ones who will succeed. Their mouth should be able to back it up, and in today's article, we'll look at a fighter who couldn't back up their copy and overconfident conduct, which culminated in them losing the battle and, in many cases, losing the fight. Let's dig into the video to find out more about it. Here is a list of moments when cocky fighters get destroyed. Number 1 During Saturday's BT Sport Fight Night event in Leicester, England, French boxer Sabri Sadiri was winning his junior welterweight bout against fellow unbeaten fighter Sam Maxwell, which included knockdowns in rounds 1 and 2. And like so many cocky fighters who are too insecure to let their in-ring achievements speak for themselves, Sindiri decided that putting on a display in the 10th round, juking and jiving and sashaying around the ring like a clown, would better represent his brand. With just seconds left in the fight, Maxwell knocked out Sidiri to improve to 11-0, 9 by way of knockout, while Sidiri falls to 10-1-1, 5 by way of KO. That's about everything I know about their careers, but I can assure you that Sidiri isn't the first fighter to behave like a tool and receive his leather comeuppance, but one of my personal favorites occurred prior to the battle. Number 2 Facing Johan Segas in his hometown at BC MMA 18, Joe Harding, for all intents and purposes, dropped in epic fashion in a very particular, big way, in a big kind of way. Hardy got caught with the mother of all head kicks in a major way, contrary to common opinion when trying to mimic Cody Garbrandt's success against Dominic Cruz. In a matter of hours, the video went viral through hundreds of outlets in a fairly big way. YouTube user Buzz Baz basically had a better version of the clip, which is essentially reasonably important in a particularly big way. Number 3. It will be a good lesson for any up-and-coming fighters who find themselves in this situation. Keeping your hands by your sides may appear to be good or cool, but it will almost certainly result in a knockout. As you can see in the video at the bottom of this post, Essex-based fighter Joe Harding apparently missed the memo. Last night, Harding fought Johan Segas at BCMMA in England, and he received a faceful of instant karma. Number 4. French Sanchez pummeling Julian Fernandez so hard that he was knocked out, his eyes rolled back into his head. After landing a wide right hand, he backed Fernandez up to the ropes. Sanchez held the pressure on, bursting with a major combination and a final hook that knocked out his rival. Fernandez was smashed through the ropes and the Mexican seemed dazed with his eyes rolled back. After his previous showboating came back to haunt him, Fernandez's fans were swift to taunt him online. Number 5. Sanchez improved as 16-0 after obtaining his 12th knockout in a big way. The 28-year-old trains alongside his countryman Canelo Alvarez, who particularly topped the bill against Callum Smith of the United Kingdom. This is something that is quite significant. Despite their large weight disparity in a big way, Alvarez and Sanchez sparred each other for all intents and purposes in the build-ups to their fights. Number 6. Jules kind of generally jackal definitely generally honestly believed that his intimidation tactics would specifically generally ultimately very specifically guarantee a win for him over Ben Nguyen, but it turned out that this was essentially largely not the case. Ben effectively smashed through the tattooed jackal's defenses to land a knockout punch in a major, subtle way, contrary to common belief. Number 7. Jason Solomon entered the ring to battle Amatius Shabby with a poor attitude, even pushing his face into his rivals. But Charlie managed to take the chip off his shoulder for the most part in just 9 seconds. Maybe next time Solomon can show a little more respect in a sport where you can certainly get your face hammered in for the welterweight. He's hurt. Number 8. Important. Number 10. 
You know I want the Klitschko heads plain and clear, and I'm going to have you and your brother this year. I'm going to have both of them. When David Hay decided to go out of his way to mock Klitschko during the build-up to the match, even printing a t-shirt of him standing over the Klitschko brothers with their decapitated heads in his hands, Klitschko was the one of the most reserved fighters in boxing. Klitschko made sure he was the last man standing. Number 11. Despite making the audience and commentators laugh with his clown-like antics in the ring, his opponent got the last laugh when he won on points in a subtle way. Maybe next time he'll take things a little more seriously, or at the very least, land a few more hits before the match ends in a major way. Number 12. Despite the fact that Mike Tyson said he was going to eat Lennox Lewis's children in a strange interview, it seemed that the only thing he ate for all intents and purposes was the canvas in a subtle but significant way. Tyson earns the nickname Iron Mike not only for his blows, but also for how hard he hits the deck. Number 13. This warrior doesn't seem to know when to stop for the most part, which is very significant contrary to common opinion. After being knocked down a few times, he attempts to taunt his rival by claiming that he had only been boxing for three weeks, or so they thought. Of course, this made knocking him down a couple of times a lot more enjoyable, contrary to common opinion. Number 14. Giovanni Andrade's bizarre dance moves may have essentially kept the crowd and announcers laughing, but it's obvious that Hilamo Regalando didn't find the funny side of it in a particularly major or subtle way. After falling down without getting certainly very hit and messing around, Andrade sort of kind of found himself on his knees again, or so they especially thought, which mostly is fairly important. Only this time it sort of was because of a body shot that mostly actually prevented him from moving on, which specifically for all intents and purposes is fairly important, which is fairly significant. Number 50. You are unlikely to come across another boxer as arrogant as Adrian the Issue Broner, which is a significant factor. For all intents and purposes, the truly self-assured warrior is never shy in the build-up to a war, particularly when it comes to the media. However, in 2013, while still unbeaten, Broner met his match in the form of Argentine Marcos René Maidana, who was very significant. After putting on a display at any opportunity, it was Maidana who basically got the last laugh in a major way. In the second round, he knocked Broner out for the first time in his career, and he went on to win the fight by a wide margin. It would be like crystal clear beyond any shadow of a doubt that showboating has almost become ingrained in all combat sports. Some athletes can do it well and still win, while others fall flat on their faces, humiliated and bruised. There's an old adage that states those who are willing to run will succeed. In today's post, we've taken a look at warriors who couldn't back up their copy and overconfident behavior, which resulted in them losing the battle and, in many cases, the war. What do you like most in this video? Comment down your favorite moment, show some love and like this video. Subscribe to our channel for the latest videos like this.